Why? When was the last time you asked this question? I asked this just before I started watching this movie. Why? Why do I watch this film instead of doing something else when there are so many important things in the world? Why am I watching this movie instead of another? And why did they write a sentence instead of putting the name of the movie into a single, easy to remember word like The Matrix? Everything, everywhere, all at once. Maybe it's because independent filmmakers made this film instead of a gigantic industry like Hollywood. Apart from this small difference and its small budget compared to similar multiverse movies, people compare these films to The Matrix in many ways. Instead of the Wachowskis, this time there are two people in the director's chairs who call themselves Daniels since their first name are the same. Cool fight scenes like the one in the Matrix are perfect for keeping the attention of ordinary viewers. Behind all of this, there is something else, such as the invisible Matrix, even things most of us can't imagine. Multiverse. This film takes place in multiple universes. Across the multiverse, I've seen thousands of Evelyns. Still, it's way different from Marvel's films like Spider-Man and Doctor Strange, which have become popular in recent years in the multiverse category of the sci-fi genre. They've experimented with the most original forms of storytelling I've ever seen. It is very difficult to believe that five people, that we can almost call amateurs, just watch YouTube videos and use After Effects to make their own extremely impressive visual effects. Maybe it's because of these amateur and independent spirits, or all this comes from their attempt to make something truly new. Or is it because of the depressive feeling and hopelessness after the 2000s? Especially the younger generations fall into the black hole life. This film was embraced by a very large audience, and as a result, it created a hype. There are people out there who call it the best film not only of 2022, but of the 2000s. And even there are people who say the best film I have ever seen in my entire life. Have you hyped enough? Good. But don't assume I completely agree with those just because I said so. I will just point out some unique and critical beauties that I have seen in this film. Let's start with the summary. This is the story of a Chinese family living in the United States. They make a living by running the laundry under their house. In the opening scene of the film, we see a chaotic room, where we can say definitely everything is everywhere. The top of the table is full of checks, and there are rings everywhere which remind me of bagels. There are bags of clothes tucked here and there in the background, and even on some of them, there are rolling eyes. Why am I telling you these small details? Because that's what this movie is about. Rolling eyes and bagels. The person sitting at the table is our main character, Evelyn, played by Michelle Yeoh. She has problems just like all of us. To her, all the family problems with her daughter and husband, her father included too, who came to visit them from China and has never approved the decision she has made in her life. The laundry, which is not very profitable anyways, is also being supervised by the tax office. Oh, this movie is also about taxes too. It would be more accurate to say about taxes and death. Just like Benjamin Franklin said, nothing is certain in this world except death and taxes. Anyway, the flow of ordinary life in the film is suddenly interrupted in the elevator of the tax office. Exactly, right now. Her husband, Wayman, unexpectedly pulls an umbrella out of his belt bag and holds it in front of the camera in the elevator. See? Bagels, I told you. Her husband's body is taken over by a personality from another universe called the Alphaverse. Later, we'll learn that some people from different universes are able to make this transition between universes called first jumps. Exactly. It's called first jumping. first jumping. I need you to learn how to do it right now. There are an infinite number of universes. The choice a person makes creates a new path in the timeline, and new multiverses are formed. In this case, it is similar to the Marvel's multiverse which they described in the Loki series. A device worn in the ear and a completely random thing that will not normally be done at the moment should be done to transfer your mind between universes. For example, Evelyn turns into an international movie star by studying Kung Fu in a universe where she refused her husband Waymond's marriage proposal and decided to stay in China. Wow, wait a minute, isn't that Michelle's yo herself? The directors even used the real footage from her real movie premieres. So our reality is just one of the film's multiverses. Once you start jumping between them, you can use the skills you have gained in that reality. But what happens if we begin to see not just one, not two, but all the realities in all universes at the same time? A person who experiences everything, everywhere, all at once. 
In the movie, this person is Evelyn's daughter, Joy. Joy? Why do you look so stupid? It's an insane power. We always say that for old and wise people, they have seen everything. This girl really has seen everything. Everything. She has gone through everything. Everything. But instead of turning her into a wise person, that much experience and knowledge, turn her into a complete pessimist. Nothing matters. Don't look at him dressed in white, in a white place like that. And she has followers around her. She lost the meaning of life. If nothing matters, then all the pain and guilt you feel for making nothing of your life goes away. And to end her suffering, she put everything in a bagel and created a kind of black hole there. Bagel! That's when we remembered that there were these bagels in all of the movie. These are the rings that absorb and destroy the meaning in life from the very beginning to the end. Absorbing your joy to live, even in the workplace of this family. At the center of our story, these rings are still there. The question of why comes to our minds again. Why am I doing this? Why am I dealing with this YouTube channel with still nothing in return? Why was I born here? Why do I live here? Couldn't I be an international movie star? Of course I could. But when we ask the why question, we often think of better possibilities than right now. But no one imagines an absurd reality in which people's fingers evolve like sausages. At least, no one except the directors of this film. The possibilities are endless. Let's go even further. Why do you exist as a human being in this time and in this world among 13.8 billion years of lifetime? Couldn't it be something else or somewhere else? For example, what if you were a stone in an alternate universe where life doesn't exist? In these moments, when the film's fast pace suddenly cuts off into a completely silent, motionless sequence, these are the parts that make it stand out, among others. In this place where mother and daughter quietly argue as a stone, but with human consciousness. Here, the subject is people's stupidity. We are all small, stupid people. That's what makes us who we are. Throughout history, we have been sure that the Earth is at the center of the universe. We exile people just because they weren't thinking the same way with others. Until we discovered that the Earth turns around the Sun, of course. And it's just one out of billions of stars. We are struggling to understand that all this happens in only one of the many universes. Every new discovery is just a reminder. We are all small and stupid. Everything she saw, everywhere she lived, destroyed meaning while increasing knowledge. It turned Joy into a person who thinks that nothing has meaning and value. But she's just one of the millions of young people who feel that way. Technology made us somewhat multiverse travelers. We could make inverse jumps with the screens when we slide out the screens in front of our eyes. We are watching someone's lives more beautiful than ours with a photo and seeing a world better than ours with a video. We experience everything, everywhere, all at once. This can have two results. Whatever we do, we can enjoy it. Pleasure, happiness, like the Chinese girl's name in the movie, joy. But the Chinese equivalent of joy is completely different, catastrophe. This is the second consequence of experiencing everything, everywhere, all at once. Hyperactive individuals who can't focus on anything, who can't live the moment. Humanoids whose ego rise to the top because they think they saw and know everything in their short life. But they misunderstood knowledge and wisdom. This brings people catastrophe, not happiness. It slowly turns us into people who are in tragedy. Because we don't know the value of what we have, we feel like we are rolling off the cliff. This is the paradox of the girl who sees and knows everything in the movie. That's why she built that bagel and stuffed everything in the universe into it, to banish herself from existence. See, when you really put everything on a bagel, it becomes this. It's interesting that the metaphor here is chosen as a bagel, but it's not just a random choice. There are theories of physics that claim that the shape of the entire universe could be like this. This bagel represents the pain of existing in infinite universes, infinite possibilities. While Joey is going through all this, we can see the change and awareness that her mother is going through, through her eyes. Eyes are just like bagels, aren't they? Holes inside a ring. There is a gap in the black bagel created by the girl. However, the eyes we have seen here and there since the very beginning are the opposite, black dots in a white circle. This symbol is the opposite of Joy's thoughts. Yes, we are all small and stupid people. 
we may be empty, but it's up to us to fill it. These tiny symbols give life to everything they touch throughout the film. They give a spirit to the bags of clothes at the very beginning, to the washing machines. The sticks and even the stones become alive with these symbols. Instead of Agent Smith in the Matrix, the vehicle represents the darkness in this film. And instead of Neo fighting with it, the mother of the family is battling with all this as the chosen one. However, my favorite character is a shy, introverted, and even a bit of a timid father, Wayman, because he represents humbleness and the struggle of his desperate daughter and his warrior wife. He is taking the middle. I know you're all fighting because you're scared and confused. He diagnoses very well the people who forgot why they're even fighting with each other in an opposed world. I'm confused too. Every new discovery, every new development is making us even more confused. It leads to young people like Joey to hopelessness, parents like Evelyn to harshness. But then there are people like Wayman, peaceful, people who prefer to look at things from a good side, who choose to see the full side of the glass. It's not stupidity or naivety. Thanks to the technology and the internet, we access more data much faster than ever before. We think that we saw everywhere and know everything before we reach our 20s. But we don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The only thing I do know is that we have to be kind. Especially when we don't know what's going on. We are in a time when we don't know what's going on. It used to be in the past, and it will be so in the future. And at such times, Everything, everywhere, all at once, tries to remind us of very important questions. What is the meaning of life? Or does it have a meaning? And instead of giving its own clear answers to these questions, it responds with new questions. If nothing matters, why don't we create our own meaning with kindness, love, respect, and care? Why? We started the video with this, so let's end it.